I didn't really want to become a cover artist. For some reason in my head, if I had put this song out, like that's what I was going to be known for. Like I didn't really kind of put two and two together that, oh, you can use this to direct people to your like Spotify page and then just do whatever you want to do after that. But I just don't know if I had the infrastructure and the mental capacity to like actually sustain that in meaningful ways. The hindsight of me back then versus now, I think that sent me down a spiral of like trying to figure out how to recapture that moment without really knowing who I was as an artist and like the voice that I was bringing to just the world in general. It was just like people just connect when people are being themselves, when they feel authentic, when they feel like they can relate to you. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm grateful that that viral moment didn't lead to anything else because I just don't think I was in a place where I'm like, oh, this is who I am. This is who I want to present myself as to the world. What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Brandon Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you stream your podcast here at the intersection of creativity and currency. And today we are heavy on the creativity. We know we love to bring on artists. You know, anybody who's going a unique path, we got an independent artist, Jalen Ashan. What's up, sir? What's, what's good? Up, what's good? Appreciate y'all having me. Welcome uh, back to LA. Appreciate you hopping on, man. Like, you popping, you know. I know you're not where you want to be in your career, but you know, you hit that that over 1 million listeners, monthly listeners mark. That's a, a Who said that's not where space. I want to be? I might be good. I might. I don't know. Like, I, don't, I don't get that. Uh, that yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm good in it. Right, you right, you right. know what I mean? You're right. Um, but you've had multiple moments, like as we just talked about, like of popping and not fully realizing that and then having a little pop. And I definitely want to get some of your insight from that journey. But before we even get into that, like, at what point did you start pursuing your music career seriously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously? Cause I, so I've always been in music, like grew up singing in church. Like I used to joke around that my grandma used to like have me in funny little suits, like on Easter singing, like, I believe the children of our future. Like, you know what I'm saying? That, that sounds a great song, but uh, I didn't know what it was back then. But and then I kind of fell in love with poetry, like around middle school. I can see that. And like my first two like CDs that I remember really impacted me was Kanye's College Dropout and One Republic's Dreaming Out Loud. And I feel like that kind of helped develop my sound, kind of even up to now. But uh, probably. When I was in college, I put out a little like, what's it called? I don't know, it was just like a little demo that I shot to my friends. I just wrote like a little single. And uh, my friends were like, yo, this is crazy. I listened back and I'm like, this was not crazy. But like then they was like, yo, this is fire. It was a lot of love. And I think that kind of gave me the blind confidence to keep pursuing it. And I think that's when it really like started going. Got so. you, got you. All you need was a little bit of gas. All you need is a few friends who yeah. can, like, it could go really wrong for some people, but, like, for me, it steered me the right way because it was like, all right, cool, yeah, you can do this, so. Now, this is, like, freshman year of college, junior year. Bro, I don't remember. It's kind of a blur. Uh, I want to say, like, this had to be around sophomore or junior year because I released two projects in college. Neither one of them are on streaming platforms no more. Uh, Why not? They were trash. They, were, <laughs> they weren't good. I was experimenting. Actually, I just started a little community thing because people hit me for those songs sometimes. And I said, hey, if you join my community, hey, I'll put them on it. So people smart. are kind of like, you know what I'm saying? You know? Uh, so yeah, that was like probably junior, senior year. And so, yeah. So did you leave college at any point and get into like the regular workspace or were you able to figure out like be like full time. Yeah, so I had, a, I had a unique college situation because I kind of got paid to go to school. Cause I got a, I got a full, I got a full ride scholarship. Mm, okay. What college? Texas State okay. University. So uh, that was dope. I was a thing called a Terry Scholar, which is pretty dope. And so, yeah. I, but it's just funny because I have my own views about college now. But I think because I had that scholarship and it kind of gave me a stipend, it gave me just the flexibility to like. Like I didn't have to work a job in college, basically. Like it was able, I was able to focus on school, network, experiment, do music, like meet people without kind of the stress of feeling like, oh yeah, you one of those guys, it's going around free. Yeah, but you know what? You don't, you didn't realize it. Like I don't think I realized the opportunity I had, but it did feel yeah. free. And my mom always was just like, 
yeah, you got your whole life to work a job. Like she always kind of pushed me to chase my dreams like from early on. And I really like appreciate that she embedded that in me because it was just like, yeah, it's true. Like some people, they literally start working at like 10 years old and they, you know, that's all they know. You know, they almost don't know what to do if they not work with somebody else. So I think that kind of birthed like an entrepreneurship like spirit inside of me. So Yeah. So so you talked about that was when you started to take it seriously. When was the first time you started seeing, I guess, real success from it? Oh, money? So, uh, I, I mean, guess, I guess be, success. It like doesn't have to be money. Let's say let's say when did you feel like you had a a, a significant fan base? Uh I don't know, man, because I felt there was two metrics. So when I was in college and I was putting out music, it was dope because it was very local. And I was a pretty, like I'm naturally extroverted. Like I had a strong community in college and I had did like my own self-funded show at a spot. And I remember my bro Devontae, we good friends. Like I remember he thought I was just like, he didn't really know me. He was like a, a football type dude. He was like, ah, right, this dude kind of lame. Like he, you know, he got, you know, he, whatever. And I told him to pull up to the show and still to this day, he'd be like, bro, so many people at that show. And I think that was a moment for him to be like, who is this dude? You know what I'm saying? He kind of eating. Granted, my music was not that good back then, but it was just the fact that I had like community that really supported me as a person and what I did. And I think that was a moment where I was like, oh, like this is a win. And I remember that was kind of back in the days where like Spotify had the little What's the uh, the less than sign? Like if you have less than oh, a thousand oh, streams, yeah. man, I forgot about it, bro. I know yeah. it was gone. Yeah, I didn't no, about no, it's it. probably yeah. still there. It's probably still there. But like, it's <laughs> <laughs> <That's, laughs> been there in a minute. Ah, you know, <laughs> hey, we we grateful. Um, but yeah, I remember like looking at Spotify and seeing my songs and just like waiting for it to hit the thousand mark. And like me and my bro Austin, we always just kind of laugh. Like, oh, you remember when you used to wait like two months to see it cross or like I would be DMing all my people just like like those were moments of uh when I look back and I was like I I think those were all still wins because it was kind of like building me up and I don't even think I even had a I don't even think I had a mindset of oh I could do this and really make money on it it was just like I love to do this let me figure out how to take the money that I'm getting and put it back and connect with people in this way and build it and so like in hindsight, like I look at those moments and I'm like, man, that was successful. And not even what we're doing is successful. I don't know, there's just certain like milestones that you cross as an artist. And I think one big milestone was like, after I kind of had built my local community was like, oh, how do I connect with people who I don't know? I think that was a big milestone when I would have somebody random DM me and be like, oh, are you Jalen? And I'd be like, oh, yo, like, are we related? You know what I'm saying? Or like, <laughs> like, you know, my mom or so, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I think those are milestones and we just kind of continue to progress the reach and like appreciate the journey. Like I'm about to uh, do a supporting tour for a really dope artist named Hojin. Um, and I remember like years ago, I was trying to figure out, okay, how do I get on tour support? Like I would see all these artists who I was like, oh, I can do that. Like how do they get on and you know, most of the time it was either labels or relationships. And we just kind of secured our first, uh, it's not the first, it's probably the second, but the second like big supporting run for this. And you know, to me that's successful. That's like, oh, we, we build and we grow and we headed in the right direction, so. Yeah, yeah, and no, I agree, man. I think, I think that's a, it makes it more realistic to track, uh, to calculate success in that way, right? Because there are things that, you know, like we kind of talked about off camera you kind of have to put yourself through where, um, you know, they're, they're just learning moments, you know? Yeah. And so it's like, I'm not, that, that's why when you ask like, yo, is it money? It's like, no, you know, yeah. not necessarily, but it, it, I get that it's such a hard thing, like frame. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I will say like, man, I was talking about this to my manager and I'm like, man, I am blessed to be at a place where like, oh, I have enough monthly income coming in to where I can pay my people. You know what I'm saying? like. Cause it's hard like early on you you asking for favors and like i'm a pretty like uh what's the word i'm trying to say like i'm a pretty aggressive isn't the word uh ambitious that's what i'm looking for i'm a pretty ambitious dude so i'm like you know when i was starting this might have been before we connected i was doing a thing called rough drafts where i was trying to drop a song every week with a visual and i the first time i did it i did it from like Valentine's Day, this might have been 2019. 
all the way to like August. And it was just homies. Like I ain't had no big budget. I went, I was out of school. I wouldn't get paid by the school back then. So it was kind of like, I look back at that and people were just really willing to rock with me because they liked me. And they were like, oh, we see the vision. We see that you work hard. So I'm grateful to be at a place where I'm like, hey, we still want to go just as hard, but at least I can pay you a little more. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a win to me. And then, you know, just trying to scale it from there. So before we get to any like some of the bigger moments where the numbers start to really take off multiple times, you reference like community, people liking you, people willing to support, right? These videos, people pulling up to the show, surprising your, your, your homie. Like, how is all this happening? Do you have a method? I know you said you're naturally extroverted, right? But do you have like an approach that you feel like is an intentional and when it comes to com building community or building network? I'm from the South, bro. So, I mean, I mean, y'all know this. It's just a different energy. Like even being out here in L.A., it's like, oh, we meet people. And I don't know, like I just know people aren't going to give you handouts early on. Like I remember there was this process in my career where um, I was like kind of shy about my music. Like I almost felt like I wasn't deserving to be in certain rooms. And I would go around these, you know, these rooms where maybe there's all these artists that are like that I look up to or I know they kind of got some clout. But I wouldn't want to go into the room and be like, oh, yo, I do music because we all know how that convo goes. Like usually they're like, oh, cool. You know what I'm saying? And they just let you, you know what I'm saying? All right, all right, man. Like maybe I'll check out your stuff. Uh, but I did photography. And so what was cool was like it kind of allowed me to serve people in a way like. And I was a dope photographer, and so I would go in the rooms and be like, yo, let me do some photos for you or, like, whatever. Really not even getting nothing out of it just because I like doing photography. And then eventually they would, you know, be like, oh, you do music? Oh, this kind of hard. Oh, like, whoop de whoop And a, a natural friendship was built that wasn't necessarily built off of just music. It was built off of something else. And so uh, I think also it was kind of providing something that was naturally shareable because kind of how you were saying with events like people would be like oh this is dope you know like who who did this yeah. and then they would spread your name and you're not asking them to spread your name it's just the quality of the product that you was given was dope to them and so you kind of built a, a natural name for yourself and so I think it was kind of the same way for that early on and I just carried that with me like I kind of told y'all one reason I'm in LA and I like LA is because I feel like I don't really have a somebody's gonna save the day for me mentality. Somebody's gonna take my career to another height. If it happens, it happens, cool. But like, I don't know, once I hand that over to somebody else, I'm putting my career in their hands and I just, in past experience, nobody's gonna care about what I do more than me. And so, uh, long with an answer, but you kind of get what I'm saying. Yeah, I feel that, I feel that. So, social media. That first video, that cover video specifically that you were referencing earlier. You talking about the TikTok? Yeah. Okay. Are we jumping? We yeah, jumping. Okay. Yeah. Let's, okay. let's jump in. Let's jump into it. Okay. Okay. When that took off, like, what was your mindset at that moment? Yeah. So for context, I did. Uh, how do I? Yeah. For context, I did this Adele cover. Um. You know, Austin, the dude who does the, what if this song was R&B? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was doing those. And he was killing it. And I was kind of new to TikTok. I feel like I was an early, late adopter. Like, I wasn't in that first, first wave. And I was kind of trying to figure it out, in the, like, you know, the first, like, six months or whatever. But I was, I didn't really have a voice in that space. So I was just kind of like, oh, I can do this. Like, I, I like making R&B versions and stuff. So I made this Adele cover and it took off. And it actually took off after uh, two other videos. It was like this simple, like, people were just singing like this uh, One Direction line. It was like one line and I just got on my phone and I just sung it. And it went stupid viral. Like, didn't make sense. People was like, yo, your voice is so buttery. And I'm like, bro, like, okay. <laughs> I didn't get it. And it was going viral, so I was like, all right, well, I got these other two lined up, so let me post this. And Adele's Easy On Me was trending, so I posted, like, me singing 
that the regular way. And then I posted the R&B version. And the R&B version went crazy. And I just didn't have, I didn't really know what to do. Ironically, I, at the same time, I was kind of like studying TikToks. Like I was on YouTube. We were trying to figure out how to make something pop because I had already had friends who were, um, you know, seeing success from the platform. And just the information that I was getting at the time just really wasn't helpful. Like it was, I, the biggest thing was like consistency, but it didn't really have, there was no really instructions on what to do after you have a viral video as an artist. And I think the the person I was watching didn't focus on music specifically. It was just kind of like people who want to go viral in any space. Like it was like, oh, focus on your niche and post a lot and post at these times, which the Tom thing just never, that was just confusing in itself because it just created a lot of anxiety. You know what I'm saying? So it goes viral kind of on accident. And I didn't really, uh, I didn't really want to become a cover artist because I was so proud of my original music that I, for some reason in my head, if I had put this song out, uh, like that's what I was going to be known for. Like I didn't really kind of put two and two together that, oh, you can use this to direct people to your like Spotify page and then just do whatever you want to do after that. And that was kind of right before even Austin had his... Uh, his big song, the Billie Eilish cover. So I didn't really kind of see any blueprint. Like right after that went viral and kind of died off, everybody was going viral and like, like Sun and Moon had hit, all these other songs had hit and people were just releasing a song. And then people started saying like, you need to have a song out, you know, like don't wait. And so I was kind of devastated for a few months because like one day it just snapped and I was looking at me and my team and we were just like, how did we miss this? Like, why didn't we just put the whole song out? The whole song wasn't even done. People would ask me like, yo, are you going to, you know, are you dropping this song? And I'd be like, yo, new song coming soon. They'd be like, yo, is it easy on me? I'd be like, nah, <laughs> of course not. Like, that's Adele's song. Go listen to her. Like, go listen. Yeah. But it's just funny. It was just a different time. And so um, I think one of my biggest takeaways, though, from that, like, it's a little bittersweet, but I'm, I'm really grateful because there's a lot of stories of people who, like, pop. I mean, you know how it is now. Like, you can be on top today and forgot about tomorrow. And uh, I just feel like if I, the benefit is if a lot of those people could have got directed to my music directly, but I just don't know if I had the infrastructure and the mental capacity to like actually sustain that in meaningful ways. And so I'm kind of, I think one of my, uh, one of my biggest, uh, I don't know, one of the things we celebrate often on my team is that I've been able to grow organically and I don't have a like a viral song yet. I don't have like what I would consider a breakout song. Like I feel like every artist um, who's big, like people who are, I'm inspired by, like the the Khalees or even like Pink Sweats, like people who I kind of see myself kind of going in their lane, they usually have one song that really catapults them and then they're able to just kind of sustain off of that. Let's talk about the fact that most artists fail to understand that it doesn't take forever to monetize your audience. We had an artist literally begin to take off and make $20,000 from his brand new audience in the same month. But how is that possible? It's because we're in a new era, baby. Yes, you wanna to continue to build a relationship over time, but the first time you make money from your audience can happen today if you understand the new age music marketing funnel for artists. So if you wanna hear about this approach and how you can apply it to yourself, I made a completely free video to watch at www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize. You gotta make sure you put the www, or if you're on YouTube, you can find the link in the description and check out how we help monetize artists for completely free. I promise it'll completely change how you see things. What would you consider a song going viral, being a breakout song? Like how many streams is a breakout song? I don't know. I mean, you think about like Location by Khalid. You think about uh, something that captures culture. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Something that's just like, okay, it's everywhere. I mean, like, you know, Strawberries and Wine isn't like, yeah, uh, nothing nah. to sleep on. Yeah, it's nothing to sleep on, but that, that song came out like what? 2020 and we kind of put that out just like oh cool like it's a year anniversary we should do this like i just it's growing i wouldn't say that's even a breakout song i think that's a song that like people have fallen in love with 
but there's still so many people who don't know it. I think when they hear it, they're like, oh, I like this song, and they keep streaming it. But I mean them songs that really, like, you know, go. So. Okay. So it sounds like you, you start going viral off of a cover. You were afraid of being a cover artist, but now you feel like you could have flipped it. And so you feel... Because, you know, this is a constant fear. A lot of artists don't want to be a cover artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they want to escape that box. But now that you kind of see a way where, hey, you actually can do covers and break out of that. Yeah, you can do whatever you want to do. I right. just, I had a very, me and my team had a very limited, I think, my, we just weren't aware. We didn't know. We were trying to figure out TikTok. We didn't, we didn't understand virality. And then, like, that stuff happens and then it's gone. Then we kind of talked about, too. I think one thing about me in that moment, I remember being kind of scared to post again when I was going viral because I thought it was going to mess up the engagement I was getting. I was like, well, this video is going crazy every day. I'm getting, you know, all these followers. If I post again, like, is that going to stop? You know, I just, it was just kind of like stuff like that, like didn't know and really didn't have a, like I said, I was on YouTube, but didn't have no one who could speak direct to me. And I think a lot of people didn't know too. Like, I didn't know y'all back then too, so y'all probably knew, but you know, so, uh. <laughs> But I think too, like, and I'll talk about this because I think this is kind of uh, a hindsight of me back then versus now. I think that sent me down a spiral of like trying to figure out how to recapture that moment without really knowing who I was as an artist and like the voice that I was bringing to just the world in general. Uh, Pre-TikTok, I told you I was dropping those videos once a week. They were very polished. It's kind of like what's coming back around now. I didn't even think about that. That was pre TikTok. So you yeah, this was dropping them on YouTube. No, I was dropping on IG. On IG, once which a week. was weird because we did it for like we did it probably like three years straight. And uh, the first time it was before IGTV, and so engagement was crazy. Like I feel like that was kind of my first wave of really, like I remember we dropped those and kind of towards the tail end. I walked in Kroger one time. Indicator, or maybe it's Stone Mountain. And this dude, I'm, I'm grabbing something. I'm grabbing just like some chips or something. And this dude like, yo, you Jalen and Sean? And I was like, yo, me? Yeah, 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 that's me. Like, it was just kind of one of those moments like, oh, this is what reach can feel like. Uh, but it was pre-TikTok. It was just kind of us being consistent. And I actually got that idea a lot from, uh, y'all yeah, know who Toby the Wiggly is? Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's funny because I'm from Houston. I used to open up. He used to do these showcases uh, called the Dope Art Show. And I would open up on like one of the shows. I was kind of trash back then, so I'm grateful that he let me open up. But, uh, it, and so I kind of knew him early on before he blew up. And then he started posting his Get Twisted Sundays. I remember when they was on Facebook before they even like got to IG. He just stayed consistent for like years, but it was that same kind of freestyle, kind of like what La Russell's doing. And then it just, it just blew up, so I was like, that kind of motivated me before all this micro content to kind of follow the same path and figure out, okay, how can I do that my own way? I love creating original songs. I knew that people were more inclined to listen to a one minute song than like a three minute song. So I was like, well, let me just throw out all these ideas and then let the people who rock with me just, you know, pick the songs. It kind of helped me even like put out an album because at that, that time I didn't want to waste all this time putting out an album or working on an album just to put it out for it to get like three plays because nobody knows who you are. So it kind of brought people on a journey with me. I say all that to say it's like I'm coming out of that space to all of a sudden like people being like, yo, put up your phone and just be yourself. And I'm like, what does that mean? You know what I mean? Like, and I think naturally, like I love stuff like business. I love stuff like I don't know, like just conversations. I'm not really a big dancer and all. So all this stuff that I saw that other people naturally would do, I was like, oh, this feels not unique to me. Uh, and then you got to kind of do that in this raw format where it almost feels a little like, it feels very vulnerable. And I didn't like none of that. So I, so I was like, ah, uh, I'm good. I'm gonna just kind of keep doing me. Uh, but when, when that viral moment happened, it made me say, oh, shoot, I got to lean into this. But I still had all these lingering questions like, well, what do I? I'm not going to sit on uh, TikTok and talk about business. Like, that's cool, but that's not what I wanted to. That's not how I wanted to present myself. I'm not going to be out here dancing. 
And so I just been, began kind of like emulating a bunch of people and it was just flop after flop after flop. And it wasn't just the fact that like if, it wasn't the fact that it wasn't connecting, but I think in hindsight, it was just like people just connect when people are being themselves, when they feel authentic, when they feel like they can relate to you. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm grateful that that viral moment didn't lead to anything else because I just don't think I was in a place where I'm like, oh, this is who I am. This is who I want to present myself as to the world. And so I'm in a whole different place now. And I think that's what makes my career so exciting right now because I feel like I can get in front of an audience. I feel like I can get in front of a in front of my community and add value to their lives more than just, oh, here's some cool songs with cool visuals. And I feel like that's what really makes artists like have a long career. So how'd you figure out who you are? Uh, I think just life. That's a big question. I mean, you always figuring out who you are, but like, I think one, accepting who you're not. I think that was a big journey. Like like big ups to people like Nick D. I got a funny story about Nick D. I don't know if he watches this, but like, uh, oh my gosh, uh, oh, uh, yeah. he done teased us. Yeah, you want me to share? I'm just long winded, yeah. so I'll be honest. I don't want to have a two hour long podcast. If he ever sees this, uh, I'd be interested to get his take. So, oh, uh, yes. Anyway, long story short, uh, so I, um, one of the things that I. What am I trying to say? Okay, look, so I come from, I, I have a lot of friends in the, y'all know the Christian hip hop space? Yeah. Got a lot of friends in that space. But I knew I'm not a rapper and I also didn't fully want to be in that space, but I had friends there. And I felt like I didn't want to collaborate too early on with a lot of my friends who did music because I didn't want to get, like, I, they're just stories of people. I have friends who are influencers and stuff who, uh, can sometimes get stuck uh, because of like certain collaborations and things like that. So I was just trying to figure myself out. So me and Nick, he kind of has some background in that space too. We're kind of, we were connected through that. And at the same time, I wasn't really used to doing like features with people because um, just because of how, how I like worked, it was just me and my boy Zach. And I, I'm paying for studio time, so I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I never really did, like, a feature sale or anything like that because in my head, I'm like, I just kind of got other stuff to do. Like, I'm not just in the studio just like, ah, oh, you know what I'm saying? And I'm making bread other ways. And so, uh, anyways, he DM'd me, and he was like, y'all, like, we should work on something. This right before Fine Apple. I, and I didn't really know him. I didn't know his music at the time, but we had a mutual friend. And I literally was like, yo, like... Uh, cool, let's do it. I'm about to like finish these rough, like the drafts, the one minute songs. Like I was in kind of that mode. And I was like, when I'm done, let's like, let's figure it out. Because he was cool people even over uh, DM. And then maybe like a few months pass and find out what takes off. And I think I hit him and it wasn't even like on some like, yo, let's work. It was more just like, oh, you cool. Cause we had a lot in common. Like uh, he, was, he came from like the, the film space and things like that. And I was like, oh, we just need to kind of connect. But he was gone in. And, it, and so it's funny because back then I was just like, oh, like I probably could actually be pretty cool with Nick D. Not to say that it won't happen. I think he's a great guy. I think he's killing it in the independent space. But it's just funny, like those moments just remind me, you never know, like, you never know where you're at in somebody's journey. You know what I'm saying? And so like, I think that's why going back to your question about meeting people and just being genuine, it's like huge. Like I don't look at, at that as like a, a L or anything. I think it just wasn't the right time or whatever. But I think um, it's cool to see that I've had a lot of friends who like, like Toby, it's crazy to me that I was opening up from in a room like this. He just spitting freestyles and I'm right next to him. And now he's doing Coachella. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and, and I, I don't want nothing from Toby. I don't want nothing from Nick. I don't want nothing from, like, I'm happy for everybody who's, you know, where they're supposed to be, but it also is inspiring for me because I'm like, oh, yo, if I, I saw you when you were doing the Facebook videos and now you're doing Coachella. So if anything, if I just bet the bag on myself and I keep working hard and I keep connecting with people, you know, the sky's the limit for me too. So I have no idea what your first question was, <laughs> but that's my rant. That's why I didn't want to go yeah. down the Nick D trail because I knew that was going to go. Yeah, hey, my man, I think, bro, just hearing that because I, I feel like that's a, that's a, 
that's when you can kind of tell when a, a artist has matured to a good point because it takes a lot to be inspired by people you kind of see. You know what I'm saying? I think sometimes artists get discouraged by seeing their friends like blow past them, yeah. you know, but I always look at it like this is proof that it can happen because here's somebody that stood next to you yeah. that's now standing somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Maybe where you were the further ahead, but either way it's proof that it can happen, you know what I'm saying? And there are some artists who never get that. Like I think some artists take for granted even having those examples because some artists never get those examples. Or know? the people, and I think what I struggled with, with with those years was I felt like, oh, I need to just emulate them yeah. so that then I can see the success that they have. And I felt like I was just kind of on a journey of like, oh, maybe I should try this, or maybe I should try duets, or maybe I should, and it never, it's not that it felt disingenuous, it was just like, I think people could just tell when you're not fully being yourself. And I think I had to go through that to really be like, oh no, this is who I am, this is what I like. Oh, it's okay if I don't do that. Oh, it's okay if I do this, like, and I just feel like people resonate with that, so. Um, I don't know, you probably can tell, like, even maybe on some of our first marketing calls, probably a lot of my uh, position was like, oh, this is what's working. Oh, I, how, do I, how, do I, how do you make me more like this person so that we can see that success? And now I'm like, nah, like, and obviously I'm coming from a place where I've benefited um, off of being myself now to where, like, I kind of have the streaming proof that kind of also sustains some of these feelings. Cause I get it when you like, you know, sitting at a hundred thousand monthly listeners, you know, you're constantly looking up at like, oh, how do I get to that million? Uh, and when you had a million, you're constantly looking up, like how do I get to the three, four million? So it's always kind of this never ending chase. But if I had any advice for like a younger version of myself or like any up and coming artist, it would just be like, find out what being true to you really means and like, just go for it and have a good kind of group of people around you who can remind you of who you are and who you want to be um, as you're on your journey. So, man, that, that was that was something I was settled on. Because actually, speaking of the marketing calls, man, I was talking to Sean about this. You had a moment in the K-pop space a little bit, right? Like, oh uh, yeah, 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 bro. We gotta talk about that, man. Because it's not okay. every it's not every day, man. You hear a, a guy from Houston. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, I'm shaking the sure. K pop space, man. For so, sure. Yeah, talk to us about that. Uh, I actually don't know what moment you're talking about, but I will say I have uh, a growing Asian audience, and I love it, bro. It's so dope to me. Like, um. Yeah, I want to go to Asia one day just because it's cool. But like, uh, Hojin is an Asian American. That's why I'm I'm really excited to be uh, on his tour. Like, I look at people like Khalid and like Pink Sweat. So like, I saw this Bruno Mars video the other day. And he was in Asia and like, st like stadium packed. Like it was just kind of crazy. But I feel like sometimes, especially with you know being in our American bubble, we don't realize that there's a whole world out there that can appreciate your music. And so I feel like that was eye opening for me, even having uh, different Asian artists and, and people from around the world start reaching out to me and being like, yo, your music's dope. Like, I want to collab and I want to connect. And when we started just looking at the data and seeing where a lot of people were listening to my music, we were like, man, how do we continue to invest and connect with people all over the world? And so um, that's kind of what we've been doing. And it's been happening organically. Like we. We don't really do too much like, um, I don't know, like like super heavy targeting or anything like that. We just try to be genuine in our relationships and we see if like there's opportunities to connect. And like, I think what makes my boy um, Uzuhan, uh, he was like, he feels like my music resonates really well in those spaces because it's kind of melodic pop. And that sound is really big um, amongst that community. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I love it. I'm like, hopefully one day I'm doing huge tours in like Asia and worldwide because I definitely want to be a global artist. Um, and it definitely opened my mind up to like, man, it's just, you know, it's like when you leave the United States the first time and you're like, oh, yo, like everybody not in Decatur. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, um, so yeah, facts. Yeah, so so do you, are you starting to do, I guess, what, what am I trying to ask? Because um, I, I feel like, man, it's, it's one of those well-kept secrets of the, the music industry where like a lot of artists 
pop outside the states and then yeah. they kind of bring it back right like you mentioned pink sweats yeah. um i mean i remember seeing artists like even as far back as like a six nine or something mm -hmm. you know something like popping in russia and then it's almost like you they build the audience in one place and then hold the perception that they're kind of that they're they're moving in the u.s or yeah. Some of them would kind of, I guess, maybe even abandon it and focus it uh, all the way on that space. So I guess what I'm trying to ask, man, is like, has has seeing how your your music impacts that side of the world start to change the way that you even push your music or, or put your music out? Like, are you keeping them at the at the forefront of, of the stuff that you do? So I think where I'm at now is, I think we're very intentional. Like when I'm having conversations with my team or with my manager, I'm like, yo, like, where are people listening to me at? Let's make sure they're connecting with me more, you know, let's make sure that we're serving them, yeah, whether that be more music, whether that's content, whether that's, that's ads, whether that's, you know, stuff that we can do, you know, eventually, hopefully one day it'll be me actually going to those places. Um, and it's the same way I'm doing it here. Like, it's kind of like, oh, what are my top cities? Okay, cool. How do I keep serving them? How do I, um, you know, I think a big thing about this tour that I'm doing support on is that it's in California. And a lot of my audience is also in California, like, and so actually being able to, you know, shake hands and see people and, you know, give hugs and like put faces to these numbers um, is something that I'm excited about. And I think something that we try to be intentional about um, while being aware that like wherever the music goes, like we're open to it. Like at this point, when I drop a song, I, one reason I put out so much music is because I'm like, I. You know, y'all heard the term like it's all assets in one sense, like from a financial standpoint, but also like you just never know what's going to go. Like you were talking about how strawberries and wine acoustic is so big. I put that out as kind of like, oh, uh, uh, oh, to the original because it was the anniversary. I thought it would be cool. I never thought it would be my biggest song. We joke because I didn't necessarily want to be a cover artist and I'm not being a cover artist. But if you went to my page right now, you would just hear a bunch of acoustic records like as kind of the top like five and so i'm like oh people are gonna think i'm an acoustic artist and i'm like i don't want to do that either but it's okay it's just like hey if this is what people like you know like continue to feed them like i would be doing you a disservice if you really love my acoustic songs and i'm like ah no nah, i'm good i'm like nah i'll make an acoustic song and i enjoy making acoustic songs now so i just keep putting them out my show is still gonna be what i want it to be and i'll throw those elements in there because people love them but like it's helping people connect with me. It's expanding the reach because even like Spotify's algorithm and the different algorithms like can see like, oh, people really like Jalen's acoustic songs. So now every time I drop an acoustic song, they're like, oh, here's another one. Oh, we already know where that needs to go. You know, so um, it's just a lot of benefits. And ultimately, we just I just want my music to connect with as many people as possible and uh, and then figure out a way to kind of bridge the gap between just numbers on the screen to actual personal interaction. So. When you get to the stage that you can do a full blown production, this is your show, the world is yours, right? Yep. What do you see that looking like? Like, how does it feel? What's the vibe in the room? What's the crowd on when they when they show up? How they dressed? Mm. What's my audience look like? I don't know, cause I don't. I think I'm learning my audience. Like I thought. My, I told you I felt like I came from kind of like a misfit space where like I didn't know who like I didn't know where I really fit in, you know. Uh, and I still kind of feel like that sometimes. Like I'm just like I, I would be interested when I actually feel like I'm doing a show that, you know, uh, has a decent sized crowd where I can kind of get an idea of, you know, who's who to know what that looks like. But I just think it's like people who like, like to have fun. Like I think my show, you saw me in New York uh, kind of bouncing around on stage. Like I think, and I remember you saying like, oh, I didn't think your show was going to be like that. Like, I think that's kind of the, uh, the take back that I want people to have. Like, oh, like I didn't realize your show was going to be this engaging. Like I'm very, everything I do, I try to be intentional about it. So like I, when I see somebody doing a show, I'm like, oh, I like this. Oh, they didn't say their name. Like, I don't know who this person is. They killing it, but they haven't said their name once. Oh, like I would, you know, do this. I'm always kind of analyzing. And I'm trying to work with my team to figure out, okay, how do we include this in our in our show? So even with the support tour, I'm like, yo, I want people, like, what are some elements that I can do that are memorable moments for people? Because, I mean, you hear new songs all the time, but what's going to make somebody 
really be like, yo, I like you. Like, who, who, I was talking to somebody and uh, we were talking about Drake and it was like, oh, uh, Drake's so cool. It was somebody, like I watched the Dominic Fike interview recently. And I was like, I don't even know this dude. I'm like, oh, he cool, you know? And uh, I think that's the moments that convert people from like just casual listeners to like, oh, I'm about the ticket to your show. Oh, I'm gonna tell my friends about you because there's this element of like, I like you as a person. I really don't know you, but like, I really like you yeah. as a person. Like, like you just cool. answer questions and your vibe. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I think that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, I, and I think that's the energy I want people to feel at my show. It's like, yo, like, oh, you cool. And you at his show? So you probably cool too. You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of vibe is, I want to feel genuine. I want to feel like love. And then I want to be fun. So when you say creating moments for people to remember, have you actually thought about what you want to do? As a, on my show? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't want to throw it All out because right. I don't know when it's coming what, out because, you what, know. What's, what's, what's some shit that somebody else has done and that you're like, oh, yeah, I like that. People are going to remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you don't apply it to your own show, but you just like, oh, yeah, that's dope. Well, the first thing that came to mind was the thing I was going to put on. No, uh, <laughs> it was a variation of it. So I'm not going to get that sauce away yet. But uh, I don't know. I think people who are just stri- strategic in ways that they engage with crowds, like, um, and you got to kind of tailor that to, to your crowd, but I'm trying to think of some moments. Like I love Bellion, Ooh. John Bellion, okay. uh, his live show is crazy. Um, uh, but he's very like intentional of making like fun moments. One of the best performers I've ever seen was Bruno, but it's just kind of, he in, inserts his personality lot, yeah. into his show. And it just, you just sit there, you like, yo, you cold as singing, but you just like also funny. Like, it's just like, I became a Bruno fan off of his shows. Like in. 2011 or something. Oh, was that the uh, 24 Karat era? No, nah, that was before that. It was before that? that? Was, it was him and B.O.B. were the only thing. Oh, for day. real? Yeah, it was that. But then they, um, I just happened to be on YouTube and see like shows. I just saw these performances. One of them, he was on a small show, him and one guy just yeah. singing. But it was all, Crazy. he always put his personality, like people were always laughing. He was like singing a Michael Jackson song at one point. Like he was, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was just always personality, playing with his homies in some shows. Yeah. You can always get that from them. And that's what I'm excited to do in shows. And that, you know, it's funny because I look back at TikTok and my struggle with it initially, because I can do this easy, but when it came to like being in front of a screen, it just felt like it didn't like translate. Like I, I kind of almost go into business mode. Like I can just like, you know what I'm saying? When people just switch up and you like talking like an email and it just felt like it was coming off like that. But I'm excited because in my shows, like I love, like I can I can say something stupid and people laugh and be like, you know what I'm saying? Like it just feels authentic. It's like, oh right, cool, we all humans, we all here. Um, and it's hard to sometimes translate that over. Some people do it really well. I'm working on it. What about the Drake AI moment? What, the song? No. The song was kind of tough. No, the, the Drake moment. <laughs> <laughs> the song was kind of tough. I'm talking about the stage. About the the stage. Yeah, where well, people thought it was AI, the face. Oh, I'm going to a show in a few weeks. I haven't seen it. So I'm a. No, you didn't see the online moment where Drake with younger Drake on but the stage. But it's a little boy, right? Or yeah, like, it's, it's a real guy. Not a little boy. He might. He might yeah, be yeah. Like, well, I don't know how. I don't know how he is. But I'm saying, like the fact he got a nice did check. That, people thought that it was a hologram or something, and then remember he interacted with it, and then that became he something him a book. to remember. Yeah, he had yeah, yeah. a book. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm just thinking. Oh no, You're Drake moments for people so, to remember. No, that's, nah, that's, that's great. If I had Drake's budget, then of course I would do something like that. But <laughs> I went to his. You can, uh, can downscale stuff though and find creative ways. I don't know. People saying they're going broke on tour, so we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I can also just be funny, and it could kind of maybe balance it out a little bit. Uh, I went to Drake's. Was it his Scorpion tour? And bro, the the like, the visual intentionality. He's kind of doing it a lot or similar stuff on this tour. It's just crazy, like how he's doing a paper plane with Virgil. He had that floating Lamborghini. Just like he had the drones, like when drones were becoming popular and like making all these shapes. Like he was kind of one of the first people I saw do that. But I'm like, oh, you care about the little things. And I think artists that I resonate with, it's like, oh, you thought about this. Like you're like, you're not just kind of going up there and singing your songs. Like that's cool. People do want to hear your songs. But you, there's just a lot of opportunity to give people more if you can, and if that's kind of where you're at. So I know every artist is different, but I think that's going to be the differentiator for for me when I do get in front of people. So Yeah, yeah no, nah, man, as fans, we judging y'all, man, 
Because yeah, yeah, yeah. like, like you said, bro, if I'm paying, especially now, man, ticket right, prices. Right, you get Ticketmaster, bro. It be making you even mad at the artist. Like, oh, and you like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, no bro, them sure. days are over with, bro. $60 to see you jump up and down. And then you didn't see kind of half the show on TikTok a little bit. So you kind of know going into it, like. Actually, that's a good point. I even think about that because I just thought about it. Like, if you hadn't seen the Drake thing, well, like, we, we would have just spoiled it for you. And just oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, I would have yeah, I been walk, I walked off the show right now. Like, bro, like, what you talking about? Like, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't see it. Uh, but it's, it's also cool because I feel like he has so much intentionality because I still see TikTok the stuff that I haven't seen on his show. So I'm like, oh, there's still more. Sometimes it can feel like, oh, you've seen it all, but. I feel like artists like him, part of their intentionality is they do different things in different cities. Oh, yeah. I mean, for him, I mean, he could bring out guests, too. I mean, he could do whatever. Yeah, bring, he, out, bring out guests is, like, the easy way. Now nah, he brought out J. Cole. Yeah. And I was like, but can you bring him back? sometimes, like, even production things that don't involve, involve, like, bringing out somebody who might live in that city or something like that, yeah. you can still, you know, it's, it's no difference than if you go to Broadway, those people are, you know, they're acting live, right? Yeah, yeah. And there's going to be moments that hit a little different night to night because they're sure. really doing it versus... Those people who like act or sing exactly like the record and they don't give you anything extra. You know what I mean? Like, you know that? Did you see that one girl? Uh, I don't know her name, but she would go viral every night because on one song, she would always have like a little freestyle uh, at the end of her song. You could probably find it online. Nah, that's a perfect example, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she would uh, she would sing a song and she would always kind of have like a little freestyle at the end. Like, that was cool. Like, I remember going to Toby. Toby puts on one of the best shows. I've seen he's always been very intentional about the show. But he would always incorporate these moments where like if the crowd is giving him energy, he would like, you know, like uh, almost give like kind of a, a beatbox type drummer thing and like start freestyling and dancing. And it felt like impromptu and organic. Just stuff like that where it could be calculated for the artist. Like, you know what's coming up. But to the audience, it feels like, oh man, like that's different. They they can tell when you try to, you know, serve them by thinking out the box, by really putting on a show, by really trying to be entertaining. So like, I don't know, I just respect artists who do that. And if you don't, if that's not your cup of tea, that's fine. But like, I think that's what really um, can separate you coming up. And I think that's also what people gravitate to when you do make it. Like they're like, oh, play the songs I love but throw your personality in there. Like, let me see kind of who you are in the midst, so. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you aspire to achieve in your career over the next five years? Five years, five year plan. Uh, <laughs> yo, uh, you want it like a breakdown? Like a, I don't know, I just I'm, want, I'm I was just I curious what your answer was. Nah, me and, me and my manager was actually talking about this because, um, I was talking to this guy and he was like, you gotta do everything with the end in mind. And I thought that was really good. Like he was just telling me he wakes up every day with intentionality because he knows where he wants to go. Even if it's just for the day, starting with the end in mind. So I sat down with my manager, I was like, hey, where do we wanna go? We're getting deal offers, you know, people are reaching out to us. We can stay independent, we can potentially sign what makes sense. And we kind of need to have a clear, understanding of that so we know you know what partner feels right if we did decide to go that route um and so I, I told myself I think ideally for me I would love to have a career that um is kind of on the caliber I got some good friends called the oh hellos um they're like a folk kind of rock band and they were the first people I toured with like several years ago and they were doing like big rooms um and i got two with them through relationship but they're they could sell out some pretty big venues still if they decide to go on tour right now but they're really kind of set because they've had some big songs they're almost i wouldn't call them legacy artists but they had a really like some really big songs like even 10 years ago that kind of have still sustain sustain them to now and they still have a really like like loyal fan base. They also caught a wave on TikTok, not even like really trying, just, you know, it just turned into something. And so they can, if they want to go tour, they want to do more, they could, if they want to just chill, they can. And they also still can like enjoy their lives. And I think that's kind of what I aspire to be. And so we were kind of looking at people that we want to model ourselves off of. And I think somebody like, 
you know, the All Hallows, Jeremy Sucker, Pink Sweats are like, and not those are people who are kind of more in that hybrid space are like ideal for me because I feel like they're not too big to where their lives are like taking over. Like I love Dominic Fike's music. I'm like, I don't know if I would want to be Dominic Fike big or like I love One Republic and Ryan Tedder. I'm like, man, you might be a little too famous. You know what I'm saying? But also if, if for some reason I did get to that point, like I wouldn't mind it, but I think I would probably try to go more of a Khalid route where it's like, Khalid's huge because of his international pool, his world sound, but he still kind of has this like, you really don't know much about Khalid and he not really always touring. Like he's kind of uh, maintained the sustainability of his artist career and, and business without kind of sacrificing you know, his life. Like, I hope he still gets to hang out with his friends. Like, he just seems like that guy who can invite people over without, like, paparazzi being everywhere, you know? Yeah. So, how, those things that you just said in terms of your plan going forward, how is that different than how you were thinking about things last year? Last year, uh, what was last year, 2022? I'm trying to think where I was in life last year. Uh, I don't know, man. I think I'm just content. Like, I'm like, as an artist, you're always chasing the next big thing. And I'm, I'm working on a project. And uh, uh, one of the lines I got in there is like, uh, uh, I asked God, would I ever get to see all my dreams? He said, son, don't lose your soul trying to uh, chase everything. Don't you see all these blessings? Ain't no time like the present. Man, that changed my perspective. And it was like, I'm gonna always be ambitious. I'm always gonna be like thinking about the next five years because I want, it's a business. I want it to grow. I wanna connect with more people. I wanna expand my reach. But all my friends have told me like the journey is the best part. I know that sounds corny, but like even for y'all, y'all know how it is. Like y'all can think about when y'all first met and where y'all are at now and the connects and the opportunities y'all have now. And yeah, y'all are probably dreaming, but this is the fun part. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, obviously, I do want to, you know, I, I want to be rich one day. Like that's that's something I, I aspire to be. But I'm like, man, like being able to, like it's just a privilege to be able to do music, have people listen, get paid off of it, support your friends, do it with your friends. Honestly, not be tied up in no weird label deal. Like that's just a privilege that a lot of people don't get. And uh, and y'all know, a lot of for a lot of artists, it's all you know. You only have a window, so. You don't know how long that window is going to last. And so I, you want to capitalize on everything, but at the same time, it's just like you also just want to be present and enjoy it. And so uh, I love listening to like, I think Jack Harlow had a track on there. He was talking about how he missed the old days and stuff like that. And obviously there's some like, you know, some conflict there, but it's just cool because it shows that when you want to come up, when you're in the van with all your boys and you driving across the city, that's just something that you don't you don't get to do that again later on in life sometimes, you know, because of circumstance, because either your your career has died down or you're just in a different place of your career. So, yeah. So I know my answers be long with it. Hey, cut that yawn. They yawning on me. So just cut that out. The <laughs> so last question, man. And. You don't have to think of this from a music industry perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you hear it. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> I had an energy drink spot came, so I'm like in the opposite. No, I'm very they, they've been It's like, just because I look, I didn't know what you was pointing at first. I looked over there like, what's he talking about? Oh, you didn't yeah. see the camera there. <laughs> so I was like, talking to y'all. Make sure y'all cut to this camera so it don't look, don't do it on this angle. It looks like I'm talking to the wall. That look crazy. All right. <laughs> but you got to zoom in when they was yawning, so yeah, I don't look crazy. So y'all, they was trying to hold it in. They was like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, I get it. When you hear the term, no labels necessary, what does that mean to you? I feel bad because I just listened to a podcast episode, so I got the other girls uh, <laughs> answering my head, so uh, I'm trying to be... Come up with something all the thing, whole man. question was like, you know, the whole motivation was like, be yourself, you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to... Uh, and I got a good answer that's going to make y'all not yawn, so let me see. Uh, no labels necessary. Uh... I don't know, man. Do it yourself, man. Like, <laughs> do it yourself. Like, nobody's going to give you a handout. Like, and I like that y'all put necessary because it's not that it's not bad. That's the place that I'm in right now where I'm trying to figure it out. Like, oh, 
I don't want to miss out on opportunity because I'm so caught in my bubble. Because I do believe there's some genuine people out there who really want to help. Like, I think y'all are super dope. Like, y'all not a label, but like, if y'all started a label, that wouldn't change who you are. So, you know, I would assume that there's opportunity to actually help people, you know? Um, but at the same time, it's like, if you really want it bad enough, go get it. Like, don't wait for somebody else. And I'll say this. This is my last piece of advice because I tell all my friends who are hella talented, just put out your content, put out your music, stop being scared. Like a lot of my songs blew up even years later. If I would have never put that out, if I would have overthought it, if I would have been like, oh, this is like, don't put out trash music, don't put out trash content, but don't wait. It don't have to be perfect to put out. You know what I'm saying? Like just put it out because you could be the only thing holding yourself back. So, and you never know where it's going to go. I love it. I love it. So one day we're going to be on the yacht. Uh, yeah, there, there it is. There it is. <laughs> That's what you're looking for? We're going to be on a yacht one day, and I'm going to ask you, I'm going to be on like my Rick Ross and be like, yo, so what you think? Uh, you know, well, let me ask you, what does no labels necessary mean? Yeah, yeah. No labels necessary. I always say that use labels, don't let labels define you. All right? Mm. So I can communicate to you that, hey, I'm a marketer, right? That's me using a label. I don't have to define myself or to put myself into the, into a specific box. The way I think about myself can still be limitless, even though I'm using these labels, right? They're not necessary for me to operate within the world. That's the that's one of the like four or five different ways. That I, I literally heard you it. just say that on the other episode. So yeah. she was just saying, I was that's like, you know, just, I'm not lying. That's, that's true. I said, I or it's like say. a you know, it's like HR, you know, like or PR, or whatever. <laughs> Somebody gave you a script and like. <laughs> People going to ask you this. They're going to try to throw you off. This is what we say. No, no, no. I knew you were going to say that, too. For y'all who don't know, that, his name episode. is not Brandon. It's Sean. Because I know there's some people watching this, and y'all hear him say, it's Brand Man Network, right? Brand Man. Well, I'm Brand Man Sean. Brand Man Network is a channel. Yeah, you know. I'm putting you on. You had the question. His name is Sean, not Brandon. Or Brand Man. <laughs> there you go. But those who don't know. No, but... If you want to label them that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got you. I got a whole new spiel for you. All right, I'm done. I'm done. I should stop now. Yo, this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary. I'm Brand Man Sean. I'm Corey. Brand Man Jalen. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we out. Peace. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at NoLabelsNecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is we don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play in courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members, and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.